So what's up YouTube? How y'all doing? So, in this video I'm going to be talking about my B20V setup and what I'm doing to the head and stuff like that. And the route I'm going on with my B20V. Uh, there's two different ways you can go with the oil feed and stuff like that. First things first, we're going to talk about the head. This is a... Oh, this thing's heavy. This is a 99 B16 head. Alright. I took the valve springs out and the valve seals because I'm replacing the valve seals so take your valve seals out I've already recorded this but I guess I didn't really explain it good enough so in the next clip you're gonna see me taking this apart I was gonna explain it a little bit better you're gonna use a uh, 13 16 uh, socket with the extension this is like backyard style uh, there is a tool you can get which I've ordered to put the valve seal valve step put the valve springs back in but take them out all you need is this save you some money and all you do is sit on top and hit it and catch the little keepers and stuff like that it's not that hard to do and then to take out the valve seals you just take a torch and some pliers and torch them and pull them out which you're going to see that here Got your little retainer right there. Inspect it, make sure it's all right. Pull out your spring. A little dirty. Get your little keeper. The best thing is to have a uh, magnet so you can get these things out easy way. If not, you just get your little needle nose pliers. Just be careful with them. That one came out good. Then, all you do is push these to the side, push this up, drop your uh, valve out, push this valve out, just using my finger at the top and pushing down, it'll slide right on out. Make sure you keep them in exact order the way they came out. Don't want to mess those up.
Now it's time to get these little valve seals out. I just took this one out. It comes right out. Don't want to waste all my fuel. Come on. Ta -da. There we go. That's all you do is to pull them out, heat them up, pull them out with a good, good pair of pliers. I'm going to go ahead and do this and I get back to you. So that's how you take the valve springs and the seals out. Alright, so the next thing you're going to want to do is slot this around. Hopefully you can see this. This is your intake side. And right here is your little like neck piece that comes off for your uh, coolant. Right above it you got this, uh, I'm going to call it a screw, but I guess it's not really a screw. It's an Allen thing right here. This little plug, which goes right here, you're going to want to break that loose. Whatever you do, don't strip it. You can see it right there. Whatever you do, don't strip it. It is, it's in there pretty good. This one was in there pretty good. Get that out. So I'm using a little Allen key. This one is actually a 516 uh, Allen key majigger. That's got in this thing. And uh, this, I'm going to call it a bolt, is pretty damn tight. And it's being a pain in the ass to get out. You don't want to snap it, then you got to freaking tap it and all that crap. So I'm trying my best not to snap it or to do anything crazy like that. Because that would freaking suck. But man, this shit's being a bitch. Excuse my language, but... Also took uh, this piece off for your uh, the coolant that flows through right here. Ah, it came up. Yeah, yeah. you can leave it there as long as you got that broken loose you're good all right I did pour it in polish we'll have a polish yet I am pouring it I'll go to that in another video uh, it kind of explaining that in a way uh, yeah so next so you're still on your intake side 
You got these two holes right here. They're side by side. You got this one and this one. This little one right here, you're going to want to tap, and then we're going to have to plug it. Alright? You go on eBay, and there's a kit for that. It comes with a tap and a little, like, screw thing. It's actually like an Allen screw. And that's the next thing I got to do. So, once you do that, if you can't get that far enough down in the head, you're going to have to send this to the machine shop. I believe what it's called, decking it, where they go and smooth this out. Uh, you kind of have no choice. You're going to have to do that. If you can't get that far enough down, we will find out if I can get that far enough down when I go ahead and do that here soon. Alright. So, since I do a lot of stuff backyard style, I'm a backyard mechanic, I guess you could say. Uh, we don't go by the books all the time. It's a Honda. What do you need to go by the book all the time for, you know? So, you can get one of these things. Alright. You can put on the bottom of your head like this. And that's one way to see if your head's warped or not. Um, like I said, it's backyard style. It's up to you if you want to do it that way. I did that to this. This head looks fine. Yes, it can still be a, just a little bit of warp in it. But overall, this head looks good. You can do it like this. You can go different ways just to make sure the head is flat. Alright, that's a backyard style. It's up to you if you want to do it that way. Alright, now we're going to talk about what you need to go B20V. First things first, you're going to need a VTEC head, a GSR head, or a B16 head. That's a B16 head. Alright, that's actually a 99 B16 head. Of course, my phone's going to go off. Alright, next you're going to need an oil feed line, alright? Uh, this is one way you can go, which I'm going to have to get the camera for that. Uh, alright, this is one way you can go. You see that right there? This right here, the green, your little sensor, you can go off from that right there. Alright, that's one way you can go to bring your oil to your head. Alright. Honestly. I wouldn't personally go that way. I've heard of people go on that route, and it just doesn't seem like it gives it enough oil feed to the head, if uh, that makes sense. Uh, actually, that one right there, that block was a LSV, which was a B18 block with a uh, built B16 head, and that bottom end was fully built. And the pistons cracked in the same spot every single one and then the head it was ITR cams in the head and the cams dug into the casing of the head I don't think I have a picture of that I might on my phone somewhere if I can find it I'll post a picture of it I've never seen that my guess is the head wasn't getting enough oil I guess I've heard other stories of people doing that way and their head just giving out like it wasn't giving enough oil to the head uh, of course, my phones will go off again. Uh, the other route, which is a better route in my opinion, is an oil sandwich plate. You put this on, put your oil, uh, your oil filter right here, and this line goes straight to the head. Where you pull that plug out in the back of your head, that's where this is going to screw into, and that's going to be your oil feed. All right. The next thing you're going to need, you don't have to have this. You can use uh, your regular dowel pins. You can shave them down. But these are made for B20V. It goes from the B16 head to the B20 block. They're already made for that. That's a step down. You don't have to have these, but sometimes it comes in your kit. Uh, that's another thing you should have. 
and then you're gonna need a B20 head gasket. If you're going LSV with the B18, you're gonna need a B18 head gasket. All right. And then the next thing you're gonna need is a GSR water pump and timing belt, which I got the water pump right here and timing belt right here. Uh, that's pretty much everything you're gonna need. And then you gotta figure out what uh, intake manifold you're gonna do. I'm not using the stock one, B16. Uh, I got a skunk to one of my uh, SI, which I'm going to be swapping those out and putting the stock one back on the SI and taking that one and putting it on this head here soon. Um, the other thing is you're going to figure out uh, what EC you're going to be running. If you're going to run Honda, which I prefer running a Honda S300, V3 or V2, whatever. Uh, that's my opinion. I will go that route. If you don't have that, I'm going Chrome. Uh, I wouldn't really recommend Chrome because it's a pain in the ass. Uh, but if you got another route, you can go uh, Chrome. But you're going to need like that little burner and all that. I'll go over that. Once we get in the car, we're going to talk about the tune and all that. But to go B20V, you're going to need a B10K and all of this stuff. Um, you don't have to go in there and take your valve seals out and all that. You don't have to, but this has been sent for a while. So I went ahead and replaced the mod valve seals to be on the safe side. I'm going to have to clean up the valves too, which that's going to be in another video coming up here soon. I'm be cleaning the valves and hopefully putting all this back together and throwing on the on the uh, block out there and so we can drive it. So that's my plan is to get this done so we can drive it. Uh, my plans for this is honestly, it's just gonna be B20V stock with the turbo. I'm gonna slap a turbo on it, and we're just gonna send it. Uh, we're just gonna send it. I'm using the uh, stock rod bolts, uh, the stock head bolts. I mean, uh, probably gonna hear in the comments, oh, you can't use stock rod, uh, head bolts. Uh, I mean, you can. We're gonna do it backyard style. We're gonna save some money. I could go uh, ARP head studs. They make them for B20V setups or LSV setups. They're like 130 bucks, somewhere around there. And I would I don't feel like spending that right now. Uh, if you're going to go boost, I wouldn't recommend some ARP head studs. But like I say, we're just going to send it and hold it across your fingers. Uh, this setup is just for now. Uh, hopefully, this spring slash summer, I'll get started on the H22. This is to get me by until the H22 is done. So yeah, so this is just kind of like a temporary fun setup. Uh, I was going to build it, but I'm not because I want to save that money for the H22 and fully build that and get power out of that and not this B20 or B20B. But uh, that's really uh, all you need off the top of my head that you're going to need to go B20B. Alright, so it's me again. So I just want to catch y'all up real quick. Uh, <clears throat> This is still the same day, or tonight. Uh, I filmed most of that earlier. And I dug more into this head. And I plugged it. Uh, let me see. I plugged it right there. That's only how far I could get it in. Uh, I used one of these screws out of here. I just used one of those little black ones. It's a little Allen key one so I gotta take this probably tomorrow I'm gonna go look around to the machine shop and get them to level the head and it's gonna cut that uh, screw down so it's flush with the head and I'm never gonna be able to take it back out so since I gotta do that I went ahead and took the whole head apart so here's the whole entire head I already had the valves out I just took these little rockers out and the little piece these pieces out and these things, I'm not sure what exactly would you call these. I know it's something with VTEC, I believe. So I know this middle thing has to do with VTEC. Uh, the way to get those out, you got uh, these things right here. These little Allen key things. You're going to have, I think it was uh, three of them. You're going to have three. You're going to have two on this side where your timing belt is. Pop those loose. You're going to have one right here beside the VTEC solenoid. And you're gonna have to pull your VTEC solenoid off too. Alright, so you're gonna pop this one off, and you're gonna pop these two off. They're in there pretty good. Alright, and take your VTEC solenoid off. Alright, once you get those out, you got these little things right here. You got two of them. 
You got one right here, and you got one right here. And those are right here. So you got one right here, and one right here. All right? They connect into this little rod piece right here, and right there. They connect, all right? When I pulled this out, I pulled it this way towards the cams. So this was actually flipped around to my exhaust is on the side my in and my intakes was on the back. Like it would be sitting on the actual car. Uh, when you pull it out, you pull it out. Once you pop those two things out, you pull it out. And you take the uh, rocker arms and assume exactly which uh, cylinder they go in. So everything is in order. And I pulled it, well on this technically is this way. But on the head, I pulled it that way. And you stick your little finger right here, kind of push it, the little pop out on this side, and just grab onto it and just pull it slowly and pop them out. And then these little things right here, these two things, all these have them on there. And I went and popped those off. Since I got to send this off to the machine shop, anyways, I went ahead and popped them all out. Just so I don't have nothing loose, so nothing gets lost or nothing happens to the rock rhymes and all that and when I was doing all this I, I realized how dirty this head was this head is pretty nasty on the inside so I'm glad I'm doing this because I wasn't going to clean it but so much but it's a good thing to take it all apart you might as well it's not that hard it's just more time consuming to put everything back together make sure everything's op, uh, correct and all that but if you got the head and you got time clean it as good as possible you don't have to go in there and do a uh, plug it like I did if you're not going V20V or anything like that. If you bought a head and you want to make sure it gets cleaned and all that, put new valve seals in. Just go ahead and take all your little rock arms out and all that. So you can go ahead and clean everything through. Everything really. So you can go ahead and clean everything really good. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to the machine shop. I'm gonna, uh, I found a couple around here. I'm going to go see where I can get it. Uh, I got shaved down or whatever, make sure it's level to get that cut off and uh, leveled. Another thing is, I didn't tap this. Uh, it's aluminum, so aluminum is a little bit different. I guess these are self tapping because I just stuck it in there and drove it in, and that's as far as I could get it. So hopefully it's in there far enough. I hope so. I guess I'll find out. Uh, but yeah, that's as far as I could get the uh, thing in there. And it's not really in there straight. It's kind of crooked. But uh, oh well. As far as I could get it in there. And I'm going to get them to clean this really well. So I'm probably going to do it tomorrow, like I said. In the morning, take this and see how much it's going to cost to uh, do all that. And I'll probably get them to clean it or hot tank it to get it really nice and clean. Because the only thing i got to do is polish it. I'm pretty much done. But yeah. So I just want to throw that in here real quick. I know this make the video even longer, my bad. Uh, the next coming up uh, episodes, we're going to get more involved and in some other stuff you're going to need to do. And yeah, uh, hope you like this video. I just kind of did this to kind of get more involved in it a little bit because I already recorded this once. Doing the head nod, I feel like I didn't really explain it. For the people that have never done this, I try to get into it a little bit more, a little more detail, I guess. That's what this build's gonna be. I'm gonna try to get in a little bit more detail to help the kids, help the people that's never done this before, uh, feel comfortable doing it. It's not that hard. Uh, but we're just, like I said, it was backyard style, so I'm gonna be cutting a few corners here and there. But we're just gonna send it. I uh, hope y'all like this video. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.